Joining me now is student activist Tom Harwood and NUS President Shakira Martin. Shakira, let's start with you. The Prime Minister was pretty clear that scrapping tuition fees altogether would just lead to uh, pushing up taxes and would actually potentially limit the number of people going to university. So we believe in a free, accessible, inclusive education. However, scrapping tuition fees tuition fees alone will not solve the problem. When I go up and down the country speaking to thousands of students um, through my time as president, pound in the pocket, maintenance is a big issue for them and the biggest barrier preventing students from achieving. But you'd like fees to be scrapped as well? Yes. The whole kit and caboodle. Um, uh, is there not an argument that scrapping tuition fees would actually benefit richer students because they'd be able to pay off their debts quicker? I think we need to understand and see education as a public good and that everybody benefits from. I think that when it comes down to the conversations about who will pay for it, you know, when the Theresa May can find money for the DUP, which was in the last general elections, the conversation of there's not enough money is just not something that students will accept and not evident. Tom Howard. That doesn't change the fact that there is a limited amount of money to spend. And to spend £11.5 billion pounds on abolishing tuition fees would, as you said, only benefit the richest in society. What we've seen since 2010 is that um, today we see the uh, most number of students going to university uh, ever in this country. The biggest increases have been amongst those that are disadvantaged. The biggest increases have been amongst ethnic minority background students. We're seeing a really equitable education arise and I think to ditch that progress would be a really retrograde step. So for me, what my message is, it's not about just getting in, it's about getting on. When we see the number of disadvantaged students that are going into university, it that, is is very, that is welcoming. But how many of those are getting a first? How many of those are going into well-paid quality jobs? There aren't enough. For me, it's about... But they're about, getting in in the first place, but in getting record in, numbers. Getting in is not enough. When they get into university, they've taken out a loan that they probably will not be able to pay back. It's, it's not really a loan, though, is it? It's... it's it comes out of PAYE. You don't pay it unless you're earning over £25,000. It's a percentage of what you're earning. It's not a loan in any... It's, it's wiped off in 30 years. But surely you can afford to be blasé about it because you had the privilege of being privately educated. Shakira here, single mum of two, might find 50 grand of debt, slightly look, more daunting. 56 yeah. grand. Yeah. 56,000 pounds in, in, of debt. If, if we were talking in 1990, you might have an argument. When the majority of people going to university came from backgrounds like mine. Now, thankfully, it's been much wider. Uh, university is accessible to more people who aren't like me. Um, thanks to this system, we're seeing a huge step forward in access to people who didn't go to private schools and who have come from more disadvantaged backgrounds. So, what tuition fees have enabled is bigger steps forward in access. I totally agree that there's been a number of disadvantaged working class people going into university, but are they getting the first? Are they getting the support that they need to be able to get the best out, out of it? Look, I don't think that it's enough look, for the government okay, like to we say. Can, we, we need to separate we're these two in. arguments, right? There's, there's cost of living and then there's tuition fees. And I think the one damaging aspect about tuition fees is organisations like the Labour Party and the NUS telling students that they're not going to be able to afford university. That can damage access. So but I would say, I would say don't not. tell students that because tuition fees are, in, are not a barrier to education. Anyone, is, anyone Tom. can go, 100%. anyone can let, go let, let for free. No, no, so it's free at the point of delivery, exactly. but however, when you've got don't council tax students. to pay, when you've got childcare to pay, and you have to choose between eating and heating, this is the, the life of many, many young people and students. Um, fees is a barrier, a massive barrier to students accessing fees, education. Let me explain. Are not a barrier. Let me explain something about working class and people from deprived communities. We talk about this as not a debt or a debt or a loan or it's whatever. A tax. Working no, class really... people who often are, you know, um, being a part of this cycle of deprivation where there's Providence knocking at your house and Bailiff knocking at your house. Fifty-six thousand pounds worth of debt is something that people can so, ultimately. So you're going to damage access if you keep talking you're about it as if it's point, debt. Then. Answer that point. If it's Someone's if, grown up with that background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty-six thousand yeah. pounds. It's a king's so, ransom. So let's not call it debt. Let's call it a graduate contribution. Well, because it you're is only, what it is. You're it's only if you are poor pounds. when you graduate. If you are earning less than twenty-five thousand pounds, you are not going to have to but pay it back. Twenty-five thousand pounds. Please don't only... talk about it as a, as okay, a debt so because you will damage. Let me damage be clear. I would never ever access. say to anybody because of the rising of tuition fees, um, because of tuition fees being at nine grand, do not access education. Mm. Go into education. Try and do your best, and I will be champion. In mm -hmm. to try and get student support. But when it comes down to actually pounding the pocket, this and resources and travel, this is all part of what students need to get into university. It's nothing to do with tuition fees. Let me just tackle you on your message, though. I yeah. mean, is there a point that 
there's been such a focus in universities on safe spaces, on boycotting Coca-Cola because it's made in Israel or whatever, and that you haven't actually gone hell for leather on this argument about finances. I am proud to say, as president, in the eight months that I have been, I've launched a poverty commission looking into financial barriers that working class people are facing. We are now at NUS that are talking about real issues that students care about, mental health, sexual harassment policies, and pound in the pocket. And I'm really happy of the work that we're doing so far. Is that the case? Has Shakira done a good job on that? Shakira's done a better job from a very low base. Um, last year, the NUS conference heard motions about abolishing the monarchy, about settling territorial disputes in Indonesia. Thankfully, we've moved on slightly. We'll see, we'll see what happens at the conference next month. But I think we have moved slightly in, in a better direction on this. And can this I issue. say, um, we have been calling for a review into this broken education system for ages. I am delighted that finally the government is looking into this topic. And I'm happy to say that NUS has been leading the way and talking about this for many, many years. Just bring back maintenance grants and I'll be happy. <laughs> Shakira Martin and Tom Harwood, thank you both. For